Way back in October of 2016, Dart SAS was announced, and in March of 2018, Dart SAS 1.0.0 was released, which also meant that Ruby SAS was no longer being supported. I don't want to get into the reasons that they've made that change. I have linked to the post they put explaining the switch in the description for those who are interested in that though. But what this means is that SAS has continued to evolve and a lot of people don't even know about it and all of the new things that you can do with it and the new ways you're supposed to be working. Whether this is because you're using an old extension in your editor or for any other reason, I'm not too sure. But in this video, what I want to do is dive into one of the most important changes that they've made, which is moving away from imports and instead focusing on use and forward. Use and forward are part of their new module system. And it's not even really that new, I guess, but it's it's been around for a long time. There's a lot of people who don't seem to know what's going on with it based on this recent poll that I did over on Twitter. So I really want to dive in and look at the changes that they've made to it with you. All right, so here we are in VS Code. And one thing you'll notice is that I'm not going to be using the Watch SAS extension. A lot of tutorials, including some of my older ones, use that one, but it's based on the old version of SAS and it's out of date now. The use the forward, the module system, none of this works with it. Instead, I'm gonna open up my terminal and tell SAS to watch my files. I'm not going step-by-step -step on this one just because I do have another video that does take a look at that. So there should be a card popping up in the corner right now, or the link to it is in the description on how you can get started with it. And that even goes into setting it up with parcel, which is super easy to do. And with that, you're getting automatic browser refreshes as you're making changes as well. All right, so SAS is watching for changes. We're ready to rock and roll. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna go in, let's actually have this compile some CSS for us. Uh, and let's go and open my CSS folder, but just split it off onto the side because I always like knowing things are actually working, <laughs> right? And one of the easiest ways to do that with SAS is just to have a file here or a var file, a variable here. And then, you know, you change a variable and I can see that it worked. So fantastic. So the very first thing to know is for the most part, instead of using your import, you're going to be using use instead. And a very nice example of this is my font size here. We don't want this to live here because we don't want that in my main CSS file. Even I wouldn't have this here either, but that's beside the point a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna go to my fonts file and I'm gonna paste it there. And I'm gonna hit, I already got a compilation error, but I'm gonna hit save. Um, and if we go look here, just at the basic structure that I have inside of my uh, CSS folder, I have an abstracts file or folder. And inside my abstracts folder, I have my colors and my fonts. So this fonts SCSS file here is inside of the abstracts folder. Now, if you're used to the old import system, you'd do an import. You'd come in with your abstracts slash fonts. And just like that, uh, everything would work fine, right? Your import and it's working and everything is good and dandy, except import is being deprecated and it's really not encouraged to be using that anymore. So for the most part, as I said, 99% of the time, you're going to take your import and you're actually going to switch that for a use. So I'm going to change that to say use, except while well, my import was actually working, we can see it compiled it right here. If I hit save now, I get an error. But Kevin, you just said that instead of using an import, you should be using a use and why isn't it working? And this is part of the new module system, which is use and forward are a part of. And what happens is when we use something, it's being namespaced. So that means it's actually taking the variables that I have in there and it's namespacing them. So my font size here is inside of this fonts. So at the beginning here, I'm gonna write fonts dot font size and hit save. And now it compiles just like that. And this is one of the very big changes they've made that can be a bit of a head scratcher at first when you can't figure out why something is working. So everything becomes namespaced. And the reason for this is, is it prevents collisions between different variables. If you have different variables with the same name, it used to be that you could easily overwrite one by accident. You can't do that anymore. If you now could use the same variable name in six different files, import them all or use them all, and they would all still work on their own. So they wouldn't clash anymore and they wouldn't be overwriting one another. So that is why they've added this. So that is why that works like that. And just to look at that again, I do have some colors. So we can do an at use, say abstracts colors. Uh, and you don't actually have to write out the whole thing with the namespacing, but we're gonna see the, the solution to that in a second. So here, color, and that would be my colors dot, and then I have a red in there, so I can hit save, and you can see that red has come in. Because if we go and look in colors, red is red, blue is blue, nothing too fancy, uh, just like that. So everything is compiling, everything is working perfectly fine. Now, one of the very big, big differences with this over an import 
is you used to come in and use all, you bring in and import all of your abstracts first. So all your variables, your mixins, your functions, anything like that, you'd put at the top of your main SCSS file, bring all of that in, and then you would bring in all your components and your layout and your general and all the other stuff and the things that were actually compiling to CSS. Because by having this at the top, it was making it globally available to everything else that came after it. That's no longer the case. So to show you what I mean there, I'm gonna come here and I have a cards set up. So the, here you used to be able to do, let's just set up something simple in the cards. So dot card, I would do font size, would be my font size, color. And in this case, what we'll do is we'll go with my uh, blue. So it's different. And if I hit save now, nothing happens because I need to bring it in. So hit use, and this time it's in my components folder, components. Slash cards. And now I'm getting an error because it doesn't know. It's see here it's saying font size. It doesn't know what font size is. Oh, well, you're saying, Kevin, you probably should have namescaped it. You forgot to namescape things. Oh, you're right, I did, but that's not gonna fix it. <laughs> so fonts dot that, and then here would be colors dot gotta spell it properly there. And if I hit save, it's still not finding it. And that's because what's happening here is this is no longer making it globally accessible to whatever comes afterward. When we use use, it's only accessible within that individual file. So we can't bring in a whole bunch of abstracts at the beginning and then start bringing in everything else and expect it to work. It, it, it's not gonna function that way. So what we can do instead is we'd have to come into this, uh, my card here. And because I wanna use my variables here, I'd have to come up and say at use, and this is, so my at use, and then I would come in here and this is in my abstracts folder. Now I'm in my components. So one thing with use is it's like the imports, it's always a relative path. So I wanna go back a step, go into abstracts and then choose my colors. And I also wanna do the same thing, but I wanna grab my fonts like that. And now everything compiles perfectly fine. Interesting, right? Kind of cool. Um, and just to, you know, normally you wouldn't have this here. So I hit save. So this also means you don't need to bring in your abstracts to your main CSS file or SCSS file, the one that's bringing everything in. You don't need to do that here because it's not going to serve a purpose. If you're not actually writing any SCSS here or any SAS, you just need to bring in the different parts that you're bringing in. So I bring in my card and this has the imports on it here. Now there's probably two things that you're thinking. One is the, the writing fonts and colors this way every single time might get kind of annoying. And the other one is having to import all of them every single time could be kind of annoying. So let's look at a solution for both of those. The first thing, let's go to my colors here. And I'm gonna write as C. And my fonts, I'm gonna write as star. We're gonna look at the differences here. So when we write as, we can change the namespace of it. So it was colors because the colors was based on the folder's name. By saying as C, I've changed the name from colors to C. So now actually, if I hit save here, everything's gonna fall apart. And what I wanna do is I can change my colors to C.blue because it's bringing in my colors as C. So I've changed the namespace there to just be a C. And the other one we can do is a star. And what the star is doing is it's actually taking away the namespace completely. So that means we can do it sort of the old way where you do it like this. So I can hit save and now it all compiled and everything is working properly. So we're using the as, we can change the names of things like that. But I'm sure you've been on projects where you have a whole bunch of ones, right? You have colors, fonts, here you might have mix-ins, here you might have functions, uh, functions, maybe you have breakpoints that you need for something else, breakpoints, and you just have all these abstracts. You don't wanna be loading in every single time you need to like, you know, every component you have probably has a media query. So then you're always bringing this in and they always use fonts and colors. So you're always importing those every time. And you're always using mixin, so you know at one point it can get a little bit repetitive, and you don't want to be having to import or use like ten different things. So there is a solution to that, and that's in any folder whatsoever. What you can do is you can come in and make a file called index.scss, and this is also where the difference between a use and a forward comes in. When we use something, we're bringing it into that file to be used within that file. When we use a forward, it's to bring it into this file to send it back out. So what we can do is, let's go to my card here and actually just copy this. Uh, copy that and go back to my index, paste it in. We don't need these anymore. We can just do it like this. 
So I want to be in my index, but I don't want to use them in this file. I want to bring them all together and then spit them out into a, as a single singular thing, pretty much. So here I can switch this over to at forward, forward. And it doesn't like my first one because I spelt it wrong. I forgot an R. There we go. Um, so now I'm taking them into the index file and then I'm going to spit them back out. So let's go take a look at what that's doing um, and how we can use this. And remember, this is I'm doing it with two files, but you could have your 10 different files listed in your index here. And the advantage of doing it this way is now instead of bringing them all in separately, I could just do this right here. I don't even need to write index because it's named index or underscore index because it is a partial. Because it is called index though, I just need to list the folder here and it's gonna bring everything that it has in it. And because it's using the forward, it means suck them into this file and then spit them out. So it collects and then it, it you can export singularly. That makes sense, right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit save and we're gonna get an error, that's okay. Um, but again, it's be and the reason we have the error is because, take a guess, Namespacing, hope that's what you said. <laughs> so here we could write abstracts dot font size, and then I could write the same thing here, and now it's working again. So even though they're in their own files here, they're being sucked into my index and then spat out, and because they're being spat out as one, you know, from this singular file, I can import them all just by looking at that folder name because it's in the index file. And then it's namescaping it to that folder name right there. So that means it's coming in with the abstracts like that. And yes, you guessed it. That means I could come in with an as a, and that means I could rename this one here, dot a and dot a and hit save. And it's still working perfectly fine. Or I could take this and make it a star. And then I could drop this off completely from the beginning and just bring it in just like that. Now, I'm just going to let you know now, this is the very, very basics of use and forward replacing the old system of the import. Very, very basics of it. There's a lot more to it than this. So even though it's the very, very basics of it, I think it's enough to get you started with it. And then you can dive into the documentation for a bit more. Or if you want, leave a comment down below and let me know that you'd like to look at some of the more advanced uh, use features, some of the native SAS uh, modules that now exist and all of that. We can always look at those as well. There is a lot more to the module system than what I've covered here, but you can definitely get up and running with this and then explore more of it as you get used to using what we've explored in this video. And that's one of my favorite things with SAS. It's super easy to learn little pieces of it and slowly add to your arsenal over time. And if you've enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about SAS, I am working on relaunching my SAS course to take into account all of the updates that they have been making to SAS with Dart SAS. It's a complete re-record of my original course, and if you're interested in getting updates on it as I make progress on it and being alerted about when it launches, you can sign up for updates with the link down in the description below. Thank you so very much for watching. A massive thank you to my patrons for their support each and every month with a special thanks to Zach, who is my enabler of awesome. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.